Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World here at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce. Rob, we're having great conversations at the show about the transformative impact of generative AI on data management, and in particular, the introduction of Claire GPT. Yeah, yeah, I think again, it, it, even though it came out before here and had been in preview, I, I think what you're seeing is that how it helps to ease the burden for data wrangling and how it really eases the burden for getting to Gen AI. And I, I think that, to me, is a huge advantage for data engineering. Well, here to talk more about that is our next guest. He is Gaurav Pathak, Vice President Product Management, Metadata, and Claire at Informatica. Thank you so much for returning to theCUBE, Gaurav. I know you and Rob had a good conversation just, just a little while ago. No, thank you, Rob, and thank you, Rebecca, for having me back. Yeah. So, as Rob was saying, Claire, Claire GPT came out a few weeks ago, but this was really the coming out party here at Informatica World. Why don't you tell our viewers who maybe have miss, missed the key Note, a little bit about Clear GPT and, and, and what it does. Sure. And, and Clear GPT for us, uh, like I said on main stage, has been a labor of love. We have worked very hard on it uh, for the last year. Our vision for uh, AI for data management has been AI that understand an organization's data assets and data ecosystems completely and is grounded in that reality. And that's what we wanted to do. Uh, we have all seen the chat GPT for internet data, being able to ask all the questions and, and understanding, creating code, creating uh, poems, creating all sorts of homeworks for us. Yeah. We wanted to build something like that, but for enterprise data. Chat GPT for my enterprise data. And that's what Claire GPT is all about. Being able to ask questions like, I'm doing customer churn analysis can you help me find the right data assets? And when we ask a question like that, we want Clear GPT to provide answers that's based on that particular organization, on what this particular user wants. So that's what Clear GPT is all about. It's chat GPT for enterprise data, grounded in enterprise reality with the metadata system of record we built in. Yeah, I, I, th I think what was uh, amazing to me, and I, I thought, by the way, I just, again, saying it again, the, doing keynotes with demos is, is always tough. And you can have pop-ups and other stuff from IT <laughs> that we all know about, but you start to look at it and go, okay, one of the things I think was my most important takeaway was the fact that the human in the loop as aspect of it, because it is your data and you, you're grounding it, you want to put governance and you want to put guardrails around that. And I, I think people are always so worried about AI and it's going to do everything. And, and But I think there is an important context and, and that was part of the demo as well, was how, how do you use this as, as a, an assistant, not as an, a replacement. And I think that's the big, thing that I took away from it as well. Definitely, and, and on the main stage demos, completely agree. Earlier we used to pray to the demo gods, now we pray to the AI gods as well, <laughs> yes. that they are in uh, the right mood and, and, and are able to answer <laughs> questions properly. Getting uh, AI to understand questions like, what is the revenue of my product X in quarter Y? Being able to understand each of those terms for this organization, grounded in, oh, product X means this is what you, you're talking about. Quarters are different for each organization. The revenue is, uh, is it subscription revenue, ACV? Every organization does it differently. So being able to ground it in that kind of business context, finding the right data sets, that's what we wanted to do with Claire GPT. Yeah, I, I think to, to just build off that, because we've talked about, you know, in, in a previous discussion, when we're talking about the next intelligent data platform, and really metadata is at the core of that. And I think to your point, and we discussed this a little bit, is that how somebody defines their, finite, <laughs> their fiscal year, for instance, we were last week with a customer, they're, fiscal, they're in fiscal year 25 already. It started you know, April 1st. When you start to look at this, if you're not having that grounding and you're not having that metadata, and I think that's really what I've seen as one of the integrations between GPT and the metadata seems to be one of the like, superpowers of this. 
and, and that's one of the unique capabilities of Informatica, being able to create this metadata system of record for each organization that we work with. As they start with any of our products, we are creating a map of what are the most important data assets and how they are related to each other. That map, that metadata repository, which actually is in a graph database, you, uh, serves as the repository for Claire GPT for it to understand where the data assets are and answer these kind of questions as well. The problems after people saw those demos, the, uh, the customers, uh, I've met a lot of customers after that great interest, but the questions now they're coming up with is, can it create my data quality rules now that it understands my metadata? I, I just point it to my data set and have it create all data quality rules for it. For that, we need to have it understand that domain. We need to have it trained on medical textbooks because we want, uh, our customers want uh, to create dead data quality rules on heart rates and, and the blood pressures and, and all of that. It needs to understand those domain, uh, uh, that domain data very well. That's what we'll be working on next. Well, and, and it gets back to something that another guest uh, that we had on the show yesterday said about talking human to your data, you know, and having, you don't need a, a degree in computer science, you don't need to be a data scientist to be able to, to ask these questions of Claire GPT. Can you talk us through some of the, I mean, you, you've really pointed out so many of the benefits that, that this could bring, but there have to be challenges and risks. What are the things that you're thinking about and that really that keep you up at night in terms of making sure that the promise and the potential of Claire GPT is realized? That's a great question. Uh, with uh, technology like this, our users expect the world out of uh, Claire GPT. They want us to create AI models of their data. They want us to create data pipelines, data quality rules. They want everything that IDMC does, uh, which is our in Informatica Data Management Cloud, just using natural language prompts. And what we want to do is allow Claire GPT to do that responsibly, understanding each organization's data sets very, very well. So what we've trained uh, Claire GPT to do is that if it is really confident on the answer based on what it knows from the metadata system of record, only then answer uh, those questions. We have made it really uh, refusal aware, where we have told it that, you know, if you don't know the, uh, the thing that the user is asking about, don't be shy to say no. And, and, and that's what users will find with Claire GPT. I, uh, given that this is enterprise data, we don't want the model to go awry and start hallucinating and creating biases. Oh, those are not things that we don't want the model to get involved in. So that's something that keeps me up at night to make sure that the model is aligned with our uh, users' preferences. That's what we are trying to make sure that it continues to stay off, uh, always uh, aligned with. Yeah, and I think one of them just Bridging off of that, I think one of the other things that keeps customers up at night is really the privacy aspect mm -hmm. of it. Why don't you talk about that? Because I, I think that's important for them to understand as well. Absolutely, and then that goes into the system architecture of Claire GPT. I remember um, when we announced Claire GPT, and uh, there were a lot of customers who were interested in it. I remember talking to this healthcare customer. I was going to meet them, and even before I said hi to them, or, or <laughs> introduced myself to them, the first thing they said is, "If you're sending." my data to third party AI providers, don't even talk to me about it. Let's, uh, and, and that's what uh, has been the case with a lot of our enterprise customers, the Fortune 5, Fortune 50, Fortune 100 customers. They don't want their metadata or data to go to third party providers. Uh, and that's the security and privacy concern. So our architecture uses open source uh, small language models uh, or efficient language models, uh, if, if I may call them. Um, there are about eight of them running behind the scenes of Claire GPT. We have fine-tuned them on data management tasks. We have tuned them, oh, this particular model can generate data pipelines. This particular model can convert your natural language to SQL. This particular model can give you lineage queries and so on. Each of these models make sure that your metadata or customer's metadata does not ever go out of Informatica Cloud. We make sure that we never store any data points within our response database, and we never learn from prompts of uh, the end users as well. Uh, so unless somebody says thumbs up, thumbs down, we use that for aligning our models, uh, but other than that, there's no learning, there's no sending of data to any third party providers. We've always designed for our large customers, and that's our promise to our customers that we will, uh, you know, we, we will use responsible AI as we work with their GPT. So, 
Informatica is such a customer-centric co company, customer-driven, and, and you're describing how even though it's just such early days with Claire GPT, customers are already expressing interest before you can even get your name out. <laughs> They're asking you questions about it. Talk a little bit about some of the future trends that you're seeing in terms of what their concerns are and, and, and how that's going to impact and affect how you, how you build it more, more functionality into Claire GPT. Sure, and, and I, I hear some of those concerns and, and, and for me, those look like opportunities in designing enterprise software really for uh, making the experience of humans designing data management pipelines better, all the data management jobs better the security, privacy, responsible AI concerns, those are important to make sure that uh, uh, you know, that helps in designing Clear GPT to the specifications that our enterprise customers want. What they want more from here is more intelligence, being able to just point to their data estate and say, oh, make sure that the data quality of this uh, schema is all right, which is a uh, very hard problem because you need to now understand the domain, you need to make sure that everything is uh, correctly set up. Those are things that we are working on. We are working on multi-step reasoning, which is, you would have seen all these softwares like Devin and uh, you know the op open source uh, software engineers and, right. and so on. We want to create a data management engineer that can work with human in the loop for creating all those complex data management projects as well. Yeah, so, I, I, and I'll, I'll give you another, another bit of credit to the, the Informatica team that's been on stage and doing the keynotes, especially yesterday when you guys are going through, because you have roadmap on there. And by the way, it's the longest slide I've ever seen in my life, but the, like, the um, stuff, you got just a mountain of stuff you want to get to. And I, I give you, uh, obviously, roadmaps can change the second you get off stage, all that good disclosures, but what are you, what's exciting you about what's on that roadmap and where you're going to go and the, the challenges that will get addressed for those customers you're talking to? So number one uh, on the Claire roadmap is uh, bringing a data management copilot in every single service of IDMC. Whether you are a data engineer in integration creating data pipelines, a data quality steward creating data quality rules, or a governance steward creating business glossary terms or policies. We want Gen AI to be helping you everywhere, in every single layer, every single service of IDMC. That's something that we are really excited about. We're showing it to a lot of customers uh, at Informatica World, and we'll be working with a lot of them to get these out uh, towards uh, a lot of this coming this year. We're also making um, data integration and application integration capabilities uh, working through natural language co-pilots. One of the things you would have heard, Rob, in the main stage keynote yesterday was all the IDMC for Gen AI capabilities, which is being able to take unstructured content, chunk it, embed it into vector databases, and then enable uh, Gen AI use cases for customers as well. And those are other areas that we are investing in uh, as well. Yes, I was also struck by the, by the presenting of the product roadmap, which is not something Something you see at a lot of these shows. Finally, I, I would love you to just reflect on this moment in time that we're living in. We are really on, we're really at this inflection point in terms of the, the new era of generative AI. And, and it's so exciting and has so much promise and potential, but there are still so many risks, particularly when it comes to the foundation of the data. I mean, how, how, how do you reconcile those kinds of, the, the excitement on one hand with, with the real challenge before you on the other? And in terms of your conversations with customers too, how do you temper your optimism with also really, okay, this is great, but we got to make sure all of these things are, 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 all these boxes are checked first. Absolutely, and then I think that's that's really the uh, the, the party trick here. Uh, you know, being able to balance <laughs> both of those, uh, being able to balance the the excitement around this Gen AI innovation. I remember uh, me first trying out ChatGPT when it came out in November of 2022, and it definitely felt that this is a change, uh, this is a moment of change. This is not something where we have had software do anything like this, being able to understand really natural language in deep, uh, even as you go in deeper into context, into other different domains, it, it was able to understand you and was able to follow you. So being able to use all of that innovation and then make sure that all the enterprise guardrails and security, privacy, uh, grounding in enterprise data asset reality is followed as well. Trying to balance both of these is going to be really the trick. 
the way we are trying to do it is, uh, uh, you know, as we work with customers, we're trying to train our metadata models based on what they are seeing today, what their data management users want uh, today. And, and, and then, then bringing in all these uh, new capabilities like multi-step reasoning from Gen AI, uh, being able to even look at multimodal stuff uh, that, uh, that we saw, video and audio, uh, and then and being able to use those modes to make data management easier. If I have to, uh, in the short term, I think what that means is it makes, um, makes our data management users a lot more productive. It makes accessibility to data a lot more easier. We've forever talked about data democratization, and I think finally we are getting close to realizing it, because business users can ask these questions in their language and start getting answers of data. In the long term, I think we are going to see very interesting use cases is, is you know, if it is so easy generating data management code, what does that mean uh, to maintain it and, and, and reuse it? And then what happens, uh, should we all generate it at the time when it is needed? Should we have AI uh, decide data management rules for us? That will be the key. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that to me, and I, I can't wait to have the next conversation with you because it, to me, it also talks to, about, hey, you're building these data products using certain metadata, and it was generated by, you know, by AI, and now I need to go back and actually edit it. And how do I? How am I going to edit it? Am I going to edit it with the AI again? Or how, there's so many things. So that many could big happen. questions. Yes. Excellent. That's right. And and today uh, we don't think you can generate like a full pipeline using natural language. So that's why we create the pipeline, but allow people to tweak it and and make it really perfect for their enterprise use yeah. cases. I think we'll stay in this state for a while and then we'll wait for the next leap in Gen AI to, to make full pipelines possible. Excellent, <laughs> well thank you so much for, for coming on. Always great insights from you, Gaurav. Thank you, Rebecca. Thanks, Rob, thank for having you. me again. Yes. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strache. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.